All right, and we're back. We just did Born of the Gods at the end of the last segment, so... I mean, here we are on Champions of Kamigawa. Yep, there we go. I was going to say, it's okay, you can search for it. Finally got around to it. Attach target aura. Attach to a creature to another creature. Oh, this is the flip side of it, so we need to know what Kitsune Mystic does. Uh, end of turn, if Kitsune Mystic is enchanted by two or more enchantments, flip it. One, move target enchantment, enchanting a creature to another creature. It's a little bit dangerous to load this thing up with auras, but afterwards we can move them around. We just need to get it to flip when... At the end of turn, so as long as I make it to the end of turn, we're good. All right. So this is Kitsune Mystic. Uh, Autumn Tail. Uh, tail. Kitsune Sage. It's three and a white. Gray Fox Wizard, two, three. Three. And Fox Wizard, four, five. Okay. Well, blessed breath, speaker, or demon card. I think so. Can a creature can attack or block white and one return cage of hands to its owner's hand. A little on the expensive side. And it kind of defeats the purpose of Arietti, but at least when she goes away, it can attack us still. All right, I'll consider it at least, just because of the ability to bring it back to hand. The base is two white and one, right? Or two and a white, rather. One and a white to bring it back. A candles glow, clean fall, no. Clean fall is the opposite of what this deck wants to see. Shido. Sacrifice any number of spirits. I think I need eight and a half tails. Ghostly Prison. No. Hideous Laughter. Hikari. Sell Hikari if you do return to the battlefield. No. Honden. I think so. Target of spell. Oh, Harabi, right. Soul Shift. Ame. Flash. Enchant creature. Enchant creature gets plus one, plus two. Eh. Underfoot. Iku, Kitsune Blade Master, no. The actual Mystic, Kusho, Konda, Spanner, no. Don't need Aronar, Masako, Ring Mirror, uh, White Meosian, no. Black Meosian, no. Don't 
think so. There's Grave Robber, and I do love Grave Robber as my way to exile cards from an opponent's graveyard. Night Dealings, Night of Souls Betrayal, it's Desecrator, My Outcast, uh, Beginning of Your Upkeep, Sacrifice a Creature, Enchant Creature gets plus three, plus three, and has Trample, Enchant Creature is a Demon Spirit. I think so, because I have to sacrifice a creature. All of these so far. Destroy target enchantment. No. Exile target creature that dealt damage to you this turn. Enchanted creature is dealt damage. Its controller loses that much life. Okay. Seems like the type of thing I don't mind putting on my opponent's creatures. One in the book, enchant art. Uh, that one seems reasonable at least, if not actually actively fun to have on the opponent's stuff. Any of these though, they're Sensei's Top, and they all know how much I love Sensei's Top. Unless you haven't seen any of my other videos, in which case, I love Sensei's Top, because I run fetch lands in all of my decks, so being able to manipulate the top card of my deck is one of my preferred ways to stay relevant in a game. Don't worry, I'm usually very fast with the top two, it's not like I'm... Sitting there going, oh, I don't know if I'm going to need this in two turns and something might happen. It's like, no, I'm very focused on the immediate needs of my hand in the board state. I just assume I'll be able to top again if something happens. Uh, Champions, Chronicles, 6th Edition, Cold Snap. Griffin, board shelf, snow creature, no, cold steel heart, maybe. Probably gonna be ramping with artifacts, so snap. Cold steel heart, it's two artifact. I don't need King Darien, Over Winter, no, Dark Depths, Beast of Flesh, no, Assassin, Enchanted Creature can't block and its activated abilities can't be activated, Snow, Enchanted Creature gains Defender. No, it can't block and it can't attack us and its activated abilities are out. No, I like this one. It's not stopping our not stopping it from attacking our opponents. So We would need Snowman if we wanted to stop it from attacking us, but plus three plus three for each age counter on it. No. So flying first strike, pseudo lifelink. Plus X plus X, no. Destroy target creature. Damage. Any of these. 
They can't be blocked this turn except by snow creatures. Time bound dead. Old spike. Ball drifter. Later, sun bounty. No. Nope. Uh, exiled instead. Playing. Field. Wooly Razorback and Zombie Musher. Nope. Cold Snap. Commander. All right. We're going to do this. Let's do it the proper way. So our commander is white, black, and we need commander. Oops. Twenty eleven. And search. All oh, right, this one isn't going to help because it doesn't organize it properly anyway. Uh, neither does the next one, I don't think. And then the ones after that all get organized properly. So, starting with you, each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player gets X 1-1s based on the total mana spent. Uh, can attack with creatures. Each opponent attack can cast spells. Uh, enters the battlefield. Each player chooses war or peace. Uh, players who chose war get plus three power, and peace get plus three toughness. Champion's Helm. It's all right, but not essential. I uh, don't need Celestial Force. Uh, Dread Keiko Demon, no. Martyr's Bond, or another non-land permanent you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a type with it. So, if my auras are going to the graveyard, each of our opponents has to sacrifice an enchantment. Maybe? Okay. Uh, commander... is for white white for an enchantment the downside is that when my wait does the Mars bond affect creatures non-land permits yeah so the downside is that when my creatures die they would get to sacrifice creatures that have auras on them and then have to lose some enchantments but it's not the end of the world I don't think Maybe it is, though. Maybe that's not going to be good enough because of that. It's called Scythe Spectre. Combat damage each opponent discards a card. No. Sewer Nemesis. Shared Trauma. Old Snare. Fish call. Uh, sack a creature, put X counters on, remove all counters. Yeah, no. I need Vow of Malice and Vow of Duty. Maybe. This. Duty is first. I noticed the Vow of Malice first, but. And Battle of Duty is two and a white. For enchant aura. I'm in malice. Two and a black enchant aura. Which one does malice give? Intimidate. So 
can't be blocked except by creatures of its colors and artifacts. All right, so that was Commander 2011. Thirteen. <clears throat> I don't think this one worked either, right? That was the biggest problem was, yeah, just organizes it by color. Uh, but I suppose we're going to want Darksteel Mutation. I don't need Angel of Finality. Curse of the Forsaken. Whenever... Enchant player, whenever a creature attacks enchanted player, its controller gains one life. Well, given all the extra damage I'm dealing to people, I might actually want to do that. And it's another curse. Does Forsaken not have any in it? It does not. Okay. That was the only thing I could think of why it would be spelled wrong there. Gonna wait. Enchant or a curse. We do want dark steel mutation. Wait. Enchant aura. Fiend hunter flicker form. Should be a reprint. Worry about it, Mystic Barrier, no, Serene Master, Tempt with Glory. God, Baleful Force, Curse of Shallow Graves. Eh, that one's less good. Um... Encouraging them to attack that player so that they gain life is fine with the Curse of the Forsaken. But giving them extra two twos is not exactly where I want to be in most cases, so don't need the Fell Shepherd, Hooded Horror. Theomancer, no. Price of Knowledge, no. Tempt with Immortality, I don't think so. Toxic Deluge, no. And then we're into reprints. It's Commander 2013, 2014. Now it should work. Uh, enters the battlefield. If you cast it from your hand, exile all attacking creatures. Uh, gets plus two, plus two. Creatures you control have vigilance. Uh, choose an opponent. You and that player get three spirits. Choose an opponent. You gain two life, and they gain two life based on creatures. Uh, comeuppance. Token creature, no. X11 soldiers, where X is the number of creatures on the battlefield. Power greater than target creature's power. Dies, put X11s. X is the number of creature cards in my graveyard. Johnny's brother, then Nahiri. Let's comment down to a player that player sacks a creature, no. An XX horror onto the battlefield where X was its power. No. Isa. Sacrifice a creature. Yeah, I don't really want any creature sacrificing effects. Life equal life lost this way. 5-5 five, five demon. Emblem. No. I don't need Overseer. Raving Dead, Spoils of Blood, no, Wake the Dead, no, Andersphere, Crown of Doom, don't need Crown of Doom. I 
these are all reprints. Okay. It's 2014, 2015. Plus two, plus two, and have indestructible. I mean, I suppose, at least that way they would have to get rid of that before they could affect Arietti. Also, th seems on theme story wise for In Soldier 3 3 herself up as queen let's see flying beginning of your end step choose a creature card in opponent's graveyard no grasp of fate no herald of the host no johnson monstrosity exile all artifacts and enchantments hell no get out of here go away You're scaring me uh, two white and one enchanted creature has indestructible. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, you may attach shielded by faith to that creature. Yeah. I'm at least interested in that. It's a lot cheaper than indestructibility, like the actual aura indestructibility. And I can move it around if I need to, so I can, like, put it on an opponent's creature if I suddenly need that thing to not be able to attack me. Obviously, that's not ideal, but it is an option. And sometimes I'm going to want to do that. Constellation, uh, Torment, or another enchantment enters the battlefield. This becomes a 5-5 five five with Flying in Haste. Eh. Tempest, Dread Summons. I think so. Scourge of Neltoth. Thief of Blood. Confluence. Whenever I cast an enchantment spell, I get an experience counter. Get a 1 1 white and black spirit enchantment creature onto the battlefield. And it has power and toughness equal to the number of experience counters I have. Like he's okay. Um, interestingly enough, they are spirits, but they don't have flying. So that will be a thing. And white, black, a zombie soldier. Not an enchantment. Okay. He is not himself an enchantment creature. I don't think I care about Karlov. Blade of Selves, no. No. Scythe, no. Will the Guild Pact. Eh, probably not. Taking all of my black and white spells one less and maybe two less if they're both. Still kind of underwhelming for five mana. Okay, 2016. Search. When are more creatures attack, you may have target attacking creature gain double strike. Target player sacrifice an attacking creature? No. Uh, each player now ban all damage and she gets counters sublime exhalation now whenever enchant player casts a spell put a spike counter on it when enchant player loses the game gain x life and draw x cards where x is the number of spike counters on curse of vengeance no ravos 
Uh, Post-combat main phase, you may pay X life where X is a number of opponents that were dealt combat damage this turn to draw X cards. No. Any conquerors flail. Yeah, the heritage is mildly interesting. So we can give double strike to a creature attacking one of our opponents, but that's about it. Uh, if an opponent would draw two or more cards, instead you and that player each draw a card. Curse of Vitality. Whenever an enchant player is attacked, you gain two life. Each opponent attacking that player does the same. Uh, choose a non-land permanent you don't control, then each other player chooses a non-land permanent they don't control that hasn't been chosen this way. Destroy all other non-land permanents. <clears throat> choose a creature type, put a divinity counter on target creature you control of the chosen type. Each creature you control with a divinity counter on is indestructible. Uh, you control becomes the target spell or ability. Destroy target non-land permanent. Secretly choose an opponent. No. Various protection. Probably. At least to consider. To keep all of my enchantments safe in case somebody decides to, you know... Austere Command or Tranquility or something. Boneyard Scourge. Eh, Curse of Disturbance. At least I get a 2-2 also each time they attack that player, so that's a bit better. Look, and or a curse. And leech, kindred dominance, no, new blood, patron, addictive lich. Equipment, Ancestry, nope, okay. 17, and or 2018. I will say this makes going through the Commander decks a little bit faster, I feel like. Uh, choose an opponent controls more lands. No, I don't really need one of those. Uh, create a 4-4 Angel, no. Enters the battlefield, you may attach any number of auras and equipment you control to it. Other creatures I control get plus one, plus one for each aura and equipment attached to Blade Master. Nope. Uh, if you control your commander, prevent all combat damage will be dealt to creatures you control this turn. Other creatures you control have Vigilance. I uh, don't need Magus of Balance. It's three life. Yeah, I think I'm already doing enough with her in play. Like, she's already so essential to being in play for the deck that, you know, adding more to the reason to kill her doesn't seem particularly worth it. An isolated watchtower, and that seems to be it. Okay. So 2018, 2019... Uh, target permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until end of turn. Now, plus one, plus one for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. 
Uh, beginning of your end step, create a color, sculpture, artifact, creature token with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of sculptures you control. Combat phase, no. Return target permanent card with converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. The spell was cast from the graveyard. You may copy this spell and you may choose new targets for the copy. Eh. World Soul. 3 mana, 3 1, lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, make a 1 1. Sacrifice her. Or sacrifice a spirit to have her gain indestructible. Archfiend of Spite. Bone Miser. Whenever an enchant player draws a card, they lose 2 life and I gain 2 life. Creature has Death Touch and Indestructible, and this thing can be played with Morph. Hmm. I think I already want Curse of Fool's Wisdom, despite it being in 6-drop normally, and us probably not having any way to make that easier. I mean, aside from the natural ways we will have to make our enchantment auras cheaper. Do I want the Gift of Doom? More if I have to sacrifice another creature to flip it up. That seems unlikely. At least with what we have right now. Um, don't need Thieving Amalgam, Bloodthirsty Blade, Oblivion now. Nope, okay. So that was 2019, 2020. Here in Champion of Freedom. Uh, beginning of your end step, if you attack this turn, make a 1-1. One, one. No. Uh, Menace. Whenever another creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had one or more counters on it, draw a card. Lose a life. Trilobite. Put a double strike counter. Creatures I control gain indestructible, so probably... <sighs> like, I do still need to protect Arietti, so I might still want Flawless Maneuver, but... A little bit weaker than normal. Dismantling wave. A number of target permanent cards with cycling abilities. Ah, oh, this is where the impetus has come from. For enchanted creature attacks, each other creature that's attacking one of your opponents gets plus one plus one. Alright, so we probably want to consider Flawless Maneuver, as normal, just to protect Arietti. We have Martial Impetus. Two and a white. Uh, First strike, top carded my library. As long as the opponent has more lands, I can play lands from the top. Vitality Hunter gives out lifelink. And none of these. I'm not a huge fan of Deadly Rollick, like it's fine, but. Prefer other cards for my targeted creature removal. The soul counter on Netherborn Altar. Put your commander from your hand. Into your hand from the command zone, lose three life for each soul counter on Netherborn Altar. Uh, plus two, plus two, and it's goaded. Whenever enchanted creature attacks, its controller loses two life, and I gain two life. Yes to that one. It's two and a black.
Titan Hunter, Bonders Ornament, Manascape Refractor. Testing Grounds. All right. Let's command 20. Command 1. Uh, whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, if that opponent has more life than another of your opponents, the attacking player draws a card, and you put two on one counters on target creature I on a creature you control. So I get two one one counters on one of my creatures, but the opponent gets to draw a card. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, if it had a counter on it, create X tap two ones, or X is the number of counters it had. Nope. Uh, exile two artifacts and or enchantments and has plane cycling. It's okay. Inkling tokens can attack you or planeswalkers you control. Whenever a player attacks one or more of your opponents, the attacking player creates a tap 2-1 black inkling token with flying that's attacking that opponent. It's an artifact spell matters. Destroy target non-land permanent. Its controller creates mate, or creates two treasures. Enemies of Battlefield, secretly choose an opponent. You and target permanent gain protection from the chosen player. A low shield is artifact creatures. Monolog tax is medium at best. One 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 counter on up to one target creature that player controls. Each creature with one or more counters on it can attack me or planeswalkers I control unless its controller pays X. No. Puts a vow counter on a creature they control and sacrifices the rest. Each of those creatures can attack me or planeswalkers I control for as long as it has a vow counter on it. Nope. Scholarship sponsor. All cards from all opponents' graveyards. No. Light mound, no. Plagiarist. Rhetoric. Uh, gain two life. Each creature gets a minus X, minus X based on the amount of life I've gained. Don't need fame. Uh, mill five cards. Put a creature onto the battlefield. Gain duelist. Uh, rather than pay the mana cost, I can pay life. Draw X cards, lose X life. X is the mana value of a commander. No. Gosh. Uh, when I gain life, I can pay black to return target creature card from my graveyard to my hand. Maybe Vain Witch Coven. Since I do gain a lot of life, and then we can buy back cards that buy back my enchantments, basically. It's a vampire. Mana cost is two and a black. Vampire warlock. Three. I think I need the ink shield. It is an okay card to ambush players that thought they were going to get to kill me this turn. It doesn't deal damage, right? They just lose X life. Yeah, so giving her lifelink doesn't help. Alright. One was the last time we called it commander anything okay all right so that should be all of those 2021 anthologies 
Collection Commander Legends. Sass me. I search things. Blank page. All right. I think we add this in again. Stop us from getting. Oh no, that doesn't help. That brings up all of the other stuff anyway. All right. Oops. the way it was. All right, so Chroma, each creature gets plus one, plus one if it has flying and so on, no. Uh, flying Vigilance, Double Strike, Lifelink, Indestructible, and Protection from All Colors. Yeah, I don't really need any of those for that mana cost anyway. Uh, enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter of each of the two target creatures. Whenever a non-token creature with a 1-1 counter on it dies, make a spirit. Counter on target creature, no. Archon of Coronation. I'm a tiny bit more tempted towards the monarchy than normal because I can't be attacked as effectively. Benevolent Blessing. It's all right, not essential. does help a tiny bit. Notably, it doesn't destroy any of the auras I control that are already attached to it, not just itself, which is what the old wording normally would be on a card like this. But... I still don't think I need it. It would help for, like, swords and path and whatnot on one of my indestructible things, most likely my commander, since it wouldn't knock the auras off of it, but... Still seems kind of corner case, if that's what I'm putting it in the deck for, so. Don't need the prototype. Briar Blade, no. Uh, gives it protection from red, blue, and green. Yeah, I'm super worried about black and white removal. As much as I am, like, red removal and blue stealing her or something, so. And each opponent loses three life unless they discard a card. If I'm the monarch, each opponent loses six life unless they discard two cards. A Court of Ambition is okay. It's definitely the sort of thing I would want to run in this deck, since it just increases the amount of damage the opponents are taking unless they're losing their hand. Now, granted, there are going to be some opponents that can easily discard a couple cards and keep going, but the more difficult we make it for them to steal the monarchy from us, the more painful that's going to get. Huntmaster. Like colors, no. Base fetters, probably, but not right now. Pretty sure Generous Gift debuted in Modern Horizons. This set, the Ingenuity Engine. Slayer's a reprint, right? So even if we wanted this, in fact, we want it from the set he's from. Area is only three mana, right? Yeah. 
don't really feel the need for Jeweled Lotus. Picking up a card slot, it's not like we can get her down turn one or something. Uh, Keeper of the Accord. Controls more creatures, make a 1-1. One, one. Controls more lands, get a planes. So... Tax, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. Now. Top three cards, put two into your hand and the other in your graveyard. Inspail. Life flame. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose two life. Eh. Yo. Plus one, plus one, gain indestructible. Our, uh... Nadir, Nadir Nightblade. Uh, sacrifices six creatures? No. Player loses life, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nightshade Harvester. Position agent? I think so. Form. Play Grieve. Uh, tar choose target opponent. Yeah, no, don't want that. Rava, no. Ride of the Perfects, no. Two players exchange life totals. You create an XX where X is the difference between those players' life totals. Uh, creature you control dies, exile it. Uh, if control no creatures, yeah, that. I don't need radiant. Rakshasa debaser, no. Back, no. Stone Oracle. Here, the Dark Baron, no. Graphic Great Sword. High Whaler shot. For the Slash the Ranks, Slaughter the Strong, Soul of Eternity. Sazat's Will. Choose one if you control your commander. You may choose both. Each player sacrifices a creature with the greatest power. Yeah, no. Tevish itself. 201 Thralls. May sacrifice another creature or planeswalker. Draw two cards. Uh, then draw another card if the sacrifice permit was a commander. Gain control of all commanders. Create X11s one where X is the number of tokens created this turn. No. Uh, as long as you control your commander, enchant creature has indestructible. Yeah. We already have the other thing. Triumphant Reckoning. Return all artifact enchantment and planeswalker cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Does get back all enchantment cards. Um, I don't care much about the artifacts or the planeswalkers, though, so we'll probably go with one of the cheaper cards with a similar ability. That's true. We're going to get retether, aren't we? Um, Unquestioned Authority is from Judgment originally. No. Valorous Stance, Victimize, Vow, Vow of Torment, plus two, plus two, and Menace. Alright. Yeah, they added this one because they didn't want to have Intimidate. So. One of the few times where we benefit from them deciding that they don't want the old version of the card. 
in the set. Get another different card with a similar effect. So that was Legends. On to Commander Legends, Baldur's Gate. Enter the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you control until he leaves the battlefield. Create a 1-1 soldier for each permanent exiled this way. Is marginally interesting, because if we can kill him off... <clears throat> Almost immediately, we get to redistribute all of the auras that we exiled and made a bunch of 1-1s one with, so... I don't think we really have ways to do that consistently, though, so... I think we need him. Uh, Ancient Brass gets back a dead creature. Ancient Gold makes Fairy Dragons, so... Either one of those are exactly what I'm looking for. Uh, Archivist of Ogma. Opponent searches a library, gain a life and draw a card. Not really anything we needed. Also an indestructible. Uh, creature and Planeswalker cards. Nope. Uh, target opponent loses life equal to the amount of life they lost this turn, or gain life equal to the amount of life I gained this turn. So, Asterian triggers at the same time so we can stack triggers so that way they will lose more life based on the life they just lost so technically works in the deck decadent it's for white black vampire elf rogue 4-4 four, four. Exile target creature, no. Experiment. Sensor. Poker. Guardian Naga. It's a battlefield. Exile target non land permanent opponent controls, and all other non land permanents your opponents control with the same name as that permanent until banishment leaves the battlefield. Don't need the Battle Angels. Low Wisps now. Market. Uh, attacks. Target attacking creature without flying gains flying until end of turn. I forget what its adventure does. I don't need blood money. One tap skeleton token. Exile the top card of each opponent's library. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled. You cast a spell this way. Whenever a non land permanent opponent owns enters the battlefield and under my control, they lose life equal to the mana value. Nope. Bang player loses X life and I create X treasures where X is the number of creatures in my party. Attacks one of your opponents, that player loses one life. Each player sacrifices a non-token creature. Nope. Yeah, the last thing we want is to give players that don't have a way to sacrifice creatures the ability to sacrifice creatures. Sex minus X. Uh, gets plus X plus zero, X is the number of creature cards in my graveyard. Vigilance. How to deal. Each opponent draws a card, then I draw a... I draw a card for each opponent who drew a card this way. Okay. Yeah, I had to double check the wording on that, make sure I didn't leave out a word or something. One or more lands are in the battlefield under an opponent's control without being played. Search your library for a planes card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. Do this only once each turn. Let's 
explosive. Dragon's hoard, drill work mole. Enter the battlefield, tap to take the initiative, gain three life, draw a card, make a treasure. Elder Brain. Eldritch Pact. Look at the top X cards of your library where X is the number of tokens created this turn. One in your hand and the rest on the bottom. Death Touch. Brace Lod. Bar Traveler. Uh, exile up to one target tapped creature you control, then return to the battlefield under its owner's control. Mentor Vampire again. Execution. Mentor creatures you control have whenever this creature attacks, it gains double strike. Eh. Line from Catacomb. Ghastly Death Tyrant. Destroy Tyrant Enchantment opponent controls lose life equal to its mana value. Creatures I control gain death touch until end of turn. Tap all creatures you don't control. No. Grim Harvester, Grim Hireling. Aga again. This time as herself and not her related spell. Um, period. Tap up to one creature. No. Harper Recruiter. The Cleric, Rogue, Warrior, and or Wizard. Uh, becomes tapped. It and other creatures you control that share a type with it get plus two plus zero oh, and undying. Uh, she's a human warlock. Not entirely unreasonable between humans and warlocks. Although the warlocks are all going to be from more recent sets, so. Up to one target non warrior creature? No. Creature tokens get plus two plus two. Mastiff, a regular cohort. Uh, would put one or more counters on a creature or planeswalker. No. Acrobatics, Legion of Loyalty. Lulu, the Holy Fant. No. It's a balance. Partial impetus again. Mighty servant of Luik O. Trample ward discard a card. Uh, crewed for the first time each turn. If it was crewed by exactly two creatures, it gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw two cards. I think so. That damage was a warrior. Yeah, we didn't take that the first time. Um, Minthara, Merciless Soul. Next is the number of experience counters I have. Begin my end step. If a permanent I control left the battlefield this turn, get an experience counter. Creatures I control get plus one, plus zero for each experience counter I have. I don't think so. It does work really well with Daxos, obviously, since... I can have a bunch of experience counters already or gain some retroactively to pump up these spirits. So they're based on the number of experience counters I control. And if they're both in play, then they're both growing constantly and dramatically increasing the spirit token's power, so... Multi-class Baldric. Miracle's Edict. No. Uh, plus two, plus zero, and gain Menace. Uh, 
may cast creatures from the party type from the top of my deck. If I have a full party, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature I control, and those creatures gain death touch. Ship, don't. Navigation orb. Reprints. I don't need the schematic. When this creature enters the battlefield at the beginning of your upkeep, each player may put two 1-1 one, one counters on a creature they control. For each opponent who does this, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. Don't need that. Don't need the Pact Weapon. Parasitic Impetus is already in our deck. Or on the list, rather. Passageway Seer. Pegasus Guardian. Asad Bashir. Think so. I have the initiative, double the toughness of each creature I control. There's a battlefield, take the initiative. If a creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile it and put a hit counter on it. When it attacks, if I've completed a dungeon, defending player loses one life for each card they own in exile with a hit counter. 3 4 Human Rogue Assassin. Exile the entire creature I control, return to the battlefield. Miss the battlefield, return another permanent I control to owner's hand. Battlefield, draw a card. I don't know that I want the initiative cards yet, so I'm disinclined to start adding them because I feel like it's something that's going to get cut. If I decide I have room for the monarchy and initiative, which I don't think I will. Because I'm going to need plenty of room for auras in general. Like, it does help that she's naturally resistant to being attacked. So it makes it easier to run the monarchy in the initiative, but... Neither of them are going to be the focus of the deck anyway, so... Don't need Scouting Hawk. Scion. Sculpting Sunburst. Initiative card. Uh, oh no, we already saw a Reclamation that was from a different Commander deck. Vigil of Miracle, no. Sivirus Nightmare Speaker. Uh, for each opponent you mill a card, then return that card from your graveyard to your hand, unless that player pays three life. Think so. Don't need a Skullport Merchant. Solemn Doom Guard. Other Party Matters card. Permanent Control Left. Oh no, that's from. Aether Revolt. God Commander. Steadfast. Stick together. <clears throat> Buffy Doll. Summon Undead. Grave is also a reprint. Topaz Dragon, Flying and Death Touch. Nope. Powers equal a number of crabs, oozes, and horrors I control. Up to one tire creature from an opponent's graveyard. If you do create a token, that's a copy of this thing. Take the initiative, attack. One, one, no. Attacks a player. No. 
opponent has more life than that player. For each opponent, create a 1-1. One, one. No. Vexing puzzle box. Sonia. There are four more creatures, one at random. No. Venture, no. Period. Temple is under attack. Creatures you control gain indestructible. You and target opponent each draw two cards. Hala. Um. Whenever attacks, pay one life if you do create a treasure token. Nope. Okay. And we're at the two hour mark and a little bit over, so I'm going to call it there because staring at all of these words is starting to give me that eye strain thing, so I think I'm good. Um, it does sound like the rain has finally let up a little bit, so I don't know if I have time to do a draft on Arena before Friday Night Magic, so I think we'll just call it there. Um... If the rain's still pouring, though, I might not be going to Friday Night Magic because that was, like, actual flood levels when I was going out to get food for this weekend. So, like, the roads were starting to flood pretty badly. So if it hasn't stopped, some of them might even not be passable right now. So if that's the case, I'll be back on later doing some drafting. But if not, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching, and have a good rest of your day.